Smith and Dave Brown right along ringside. We're about ready to go with another big day championship wrestling. Davey, what we got? Opening match today, we're going to have Stan Lane in here going against Speed in what should be a fine opening match. Then, Dynamite. Then we get into the tag team match. And then the first one is going to be beautiful Bobby Eaton, Sweet Brown Sugar against Roy Rogers and Joe Stark. Then coming up later today, the Midnight Express will be here, and we'll also have an expiration of time tag team match, which will be featuring the superstar Bill Dundee and Steve Kern. Son of a gun, they're all here, and by golly, we got some other features, too, that we'll be talking about and showing you, as a matter of fact. Right now, let's get ready to get it all on. We'll see Stan Lane and Speed coming up right after we take time out for this. Stan Lane climbing into the ring, and here comes referee Jerry Calhoun up on the ring apron right now. As soon as his opponent from the uh, first family arrives, we will be underway with uh, wrestling action here today. Here it comes, led by manager Jimmy Hart. Under the mask, it's speed. Hart speed up to the ringside. This will be a one fall, 15-minute time limit match. At 212 pounds from the first family speed, and going against him at 218 from Delray Beach, Florida, Stan Lane, referee Jerry Calhoun. Okay, they're both sitting on ready, and we're ready for it. Bell time, and here we go, Davey. Lane, with uh, some problems with the first family, former member of that family. Now wrestling another first family member, and Speed, Speed, round behind him. Manager Jimmy Hart, big, good move, it was, but Stan Lane showed him a better move, had the shoulders down briefly, but couldn't hold him down for a three count. Headlock by Steve Kern. Back to the rope. Oh, Dan leaps in. And a drop kick puts Speed on the mat. Speed quickly back to his feet. Stan Lane ends up with the advantage and a bar on the left arm. Boy, fast action here as we're underway. We're less than a minute into the action. Both of these guys can go, Dave, no doubt about that. They both got speed. Oh, nice move. Speed takes him down. Stan, wrap that leg around. Counter move. Put the shoulders down. Speed didn't keep him there long. They're into the rope. The referee, Jerry Calhoun, is right there calling for a break. Jimmy Hart is on his feet, screaming that Speed was having his hair pulled by Stan Lane. Stan happened to have his hand laying across the back of the head of Speed, and Hart is screaming, hair, hair, yeah. hair. Speed with that ponytail hanging out the back of his mask. Round behind, it's Stan Lane. Speed off his feet. Turns him. Trying to get the shoulders down. Speed fighting for the rope. Gets under the rope and a break. Called for by the referee. One minute, 45 seconds gone in this one fall, 15-minute time limit match. Delray Beach, Florida, Stan Lane against Speed. Oh, look at Lane hang on. Hook those legs around. Yeah, and he was still in the arm bar, too. Yeah. He split it and uh, scissored him on the leg, pitched him forward. Nice move. Advantage right now, Stan Lane. Oh, now there's some hair pulling. Speed grabbed a handful, yank Lane down to the mat. Referee <laughs> Jerry Calhoun trying to get in between them, stop the hair pulling and the closed fist. Two and a half minutes gone in the match. Speed, looking for center ring. Stanley Lane waiting for him there, dumps him on the mat. Speed with a good move, went for a head scissors. Broke the hold. Seen a lot of good moves and counters in this match in there as Speed and uh, Stan Lane both are capable of it. Stan wrist locks him, takes him into hammer position, but rolled up top. That looked like a top wrist lock, but I think Speed grabbed a handful of hair again and yanked uh, Stan Lane down to the back. Would he do that? Mm, he might. He might. He certainly would, as a matter of fact. Referee right there watching it this time. And Lane, boy, power as Lane forced his way back up from the mat. Stanley, powerful, keeps himself in great shape. He bridged up on the neck and came right straight up. Rocked in with the elbow. 
We're making appropriate comments, Jimmy. Lane, boy, he had a had a leg hook there, but uh, Speed ended up with the advantage on the whole lane on the mat. Back on the rope, and the referee is back him away. Speed with a knee lift and another on the rope. Forearm by Speed. Lane staggered by it. He's backing toward the corner. He grabs him by the hair. Wheels him across the ring and into the top turnbuckle. Speed goes fifth. And the mat goes Speed. Lane backs him to the rope. Whips him across the ring. Back drops him. Just stands there waiting for it. Hey, oh, there it high is. kick by Stan Lane. The figure four may have him. Let's see. Jimmy Hart on his feet yelling, no, no, don't give it up. <laughs> Not his yeah, leg. That's right. <laughs> he can afford to holler. Oh, no. there the lady in a fashion. That's going to be the match. Disqualification. Stan Lane battling. The Iranian assassin, here comes the Cuban in there now. Now Jimmy Hart climbs in the ring. And a large part of the first family beating up on Stan Lane after Lane has won the match by disqualification. Here comes help. Steve Kern, Bill Dundee. They run him out of here, except for Hart. Hart trapped in the corner. Lane's got him. He nails him with a right. Kenny Shane jumps in, grabs Stan Lane, get him off of Jimmy Hart. And Hart and Kenny Shane head out of the area. Boy. Hart is just a guy that Stan wanted to get a hold of, too, because he's the one that he's been aiming for with all the other guys taking shots at him out of the family. So Stan comes up with a uh, disqualification win. I think he had it anyhow in a submission with so. that figure four leg lock. But 443. It's 443. We're going to take time out and be back with more wrestling action for you in just a moment. Back to Channel 3's Championship Wrestling in the Ring in just a moment. Do want to tell you about Tuesday night. Man, big card. We'll give you that a little bit later on. Do want to mention the last two matches, though, when uh, Dennis Condry and Randy Rose will be going against Bill Dundee and Dutch Mantell. Going to be an interesting tag match right there. But the final bout is going to have Steve Kern and Norvell Austin in a single match. And this is something that Kern's been looking for. Exactly right. You know, Lance Russell, this guy's been chasing me, so to speak. Trying to run me down for a long time. Yes. But now he done got his woods. I guess he done been going talking to, to them promoters and everybody. Turn, you got your woods, but let me tell you one thing. You're going to hate that you ever signed a match with me because I'm going to come now with my eyes full of thunder and some hurt in my heart. So you just get ready, my friend, because when it's all over, you're going to get dog. And there's another important match on this card. My men might have something to say about that last run. Well, I'm certain as they will. And that's going to be about between Dennis Condry, Randy Rose, and you know Dundee what? and Mantown. You know they, they think they've done something by catching our man, but they wore out two pair of Nike shoes to catch him, baby. And Steve Kern, when it gets down to the end and the, draw, the line is drawn, let me tell you something, too, boy. You're going to lose your house. You're going to lose your car. You, go, you may even lose your life. You never know. Let me tell you one thing, too, Dutch man. Tell you, sticking your nose where it don't belong. You're talking about champions. You're looking at champions. We don't need belts. Belts is gaga to us because we've been champions all over the world, boy. From Maine to Spain on a choo-choo train, we've been everywhere. We don't need it. It's gaga. We're bad right here. That's what's going to happen. Don't stick your nose in where it don't belong, Dutch Mantell. Well, you make it bit off. You know well that Dundee and Mantell are a tough team. Dave. Yeah, they're a tough, tough team, baby. Right here's the team. Here's the team of the 1980s, baby. We're what's happening. We're what's going down, sonny boy. And let me tell you something, Dundee and Kern. It ain't Kern, but it's Dundee and Mantell, baby. We're going to get you. Tag team action coming up here. Beautiful Bobby Eaton and Sweet Brown Sugar headed to the ring with Jimmy Hart. This is going to be a one-fall 15-minute time limit match, introducing at a total of 442 pounds on the right of the screen from Nashville, Tennessee, Roy Rogers, 
And his partner from Arkansas, Joe Stark, going against him at a total of 448. From Huntsville, Alabama, beautiful Bobby Eaton. And from Union City, Tennessee, Sweet Brown Sugar. This match will be one fall, 15-minute time limit. The referee is Jerry Calhoun. Okay, the robes, the jackets coming off. Uh, beautiful Bobby, Sweet Brown, kind of an impressive team. Roy Rogers, who's really been making some inroads as he's picking up that experience. And Joe Stark back with us, and we're glad to have seen him the last two or three weeks. He's really looking good, as a matter of fact. Sweet Brown Sugar, Roy Rogers, Stark it out. Roy, with that arm drag a couple of times, takes Sugar over and down. Center of the ring, they tie it up, and Brown Sugar misses the big right hand. Tag on the beautiful one. Eaton comes in with Rogers. Roy wraps that arm up. Big elbow from Roy. Tag on Joe Stark. Beautiful Bobby down on the mat. Sugar a long way away for the tag. Referee Jerry Calhoun. Glad to see Roy Rogers and Joe Starr going for the tag so quickly there. They are underdogs in this match, but uh, good teamwork. They could uh, make a run for it against this team of Eaton and that right. Sweet Brown Sugar. Eaton passes the tag off to Sweet Brown Sugar, and Sugar puts a knee in there, takes a couple of shots at Stark. Fighting back, but look at Sugar picking straight up, but he got a tag on Rogers. Big back drop. Sugar down hard. Side mare. Roy trying to hold on to that side headlock, and with uh, Sugar's head shaved, that's not the easiest thing in the world. With a height, Roy, as he just kind of stepped over Sugar, he really didn't even have to jump. Just some great balance, and heads for the corner, gets the tag. They're tagging out quickly over there. Two minutes, two seconds gone. Ooh. Joe Stark banged down on a side suplex. Beautiful Bobby off with a knee right in the head, and Stark, look at him drive on him. Referee gets on eating about using the fist. Bobby slamming down with that broad arm again, right in the back of the neck. Stark puts a foot up and Eaton goes after him hard. Slaps him into a front face lock. Beautiful Bobby with the encouragement of Jimmy Hart. Crank it up on that front face lock. Tag out on Sugar. Sugar coming off the second rope right down into the lower back of uh, Joe Stark. Talking about those quick tags, Dave. Yeah. They could use one right really now. Good. Stark's been in there a long time. Uh, three minutes, ten seconds gone. That's a cover by Sugar, but he only gets a two count. Tag on beautiful Bobby. Joe Stark still pinned in there. Stark reaching with his right hand, but he's a long, long way from the corner. Tag on Shogun here. He's back at it again with a body slam on Stark. Stark getting closer to the corner. That's the tag. Kenny, Kenny Shane. Shane walking out. Hart had been talking to Shane, we know, about... Uh, being an assistant manager or something. I don't know whether what he was talking to him about, but neither the no, Roy Rogers back in the center of the ring with a standing side headlock on beautiful Bobby. Tag goes to Sugar, and Roy Rogers beats him as he comes into the ring, bounces him into the rope. Side mare and Eaton trying to put a foot right through Roy Rogers. Four and a half minutes gone. 
whatever Kenny Shane told Jimmy Hart. Hart apparently is passing it on to Bobby Eaton now. Sugar holding on to the head scissors with uh, Roy Rogers' head mashed down into that mat. And Roy spreads the knees and gets up. Goes with a spinning leg lock. Crowd getting in behind Roy. Roy now goes back and tags Joe Stark. He had worked on that leg of sweet brown sugar. Those are some tough legs to work on. Sugar has got huge legs. Not all that tall, but really stocky. Joe Stark bounces on him a couple of times. Passes the baton back to Roy Rogers, and Rogers takes over. Five and a half minutes gone. Woo, Sugar almost got the bag with Eaton. He started through, and the referee said, nope, get out of here. Eaton does come blazing in there. Bobby jumps out, makes the tag on Sweet Brown Sugar, and now it's back after Rod. Big elbow, and down goes Roy. A little over six minutes gone. Ooh. Well, that may be one right there. He tags out the sugar instead of going for the pin. And Eaton really vicious today. He is banging away after he's made the tag and all and really putting the pressure on his opponent. Sugar goes for the side neck pressure point. Brown Sugar hanging on to Roy Rogers. And this really, more than anything, just taps the strength out of it. Seven minutes gone. Seven minutes gone, eight minutes left. Bobby Eaton was hollering. They got Roy Rogers bleeding now. I don't know whether his nose was uh, busted or what. Can't, can't really tell. I think he's got a cut on the lip, which he's had since the first time he was in there at the opening of the match. He ran into a knee there. Tag, beautiful Bobby. Shoots one to the side on the exchange as he takes over and Sugar leaves. Roy just missed the tag on Joe Stark. Rogers draped over the top rope and the referee trying to pull Eaton right back off of him. Stark comes in to intercept Sweet Brown Sugar who had also come in. Eaton. With the help of Sugar, plants one in the midsection. And we're back to two on two men in the ring now. Eight minutes gone. Eight minutes. Boy, he just rattled Rogers. Really busted him with that broad arm. And beautiful Bobby goes with that claw on the side of the neck. No, that's not the side of the neck. That is a chokehold, and the referee starts to count. He breaks it up, tag sugar. Forearm shot to the jaw of Roy Rogers. Eaton and Sugar again double teaming on Roy. Nine minutes down. Nine minutes into the action with six minutes to go. They're still holding Roy Rogers in there. Sugar slams ahead to the turnbuckle, and Roy really needs 
be able to get to that corner and Joe Stark. Sugar again with a pressure point. Collaring at Roy to bridge up. He did, but he was knocked back down right away. His sugar holds him in the side headlock till Eaton gets there. Oof. Ten minutes gone. Roy has taken quite a beating in the last uh, four or five minutes of action. Rogers trying to fight his way out of it, but Sugar and Eaton double teaming again. And a double elbow. Here comes Joe Stark in. I don't think, did Joe get a tag? I don't believe so. I don't think so either. Here comes the Gibson. And that's going to end it. So, Sugar and Eaton are going to end up with a disqualification. Rick and Robert. Hit the ring, come to the aid of uh, Roy Rogers. And the end result will be that Roy and Joe Stark uh, will lose it by a disqualification, but uh, the likelihood is that uh, they had Roy in such bad shape, I think yeah. they probably had it in yeah. there, but the Gibsons got in their licks, and they did come to the aid of Roy Rogers, who had been belted around for about five minutes, Jay. Yeah, he was in no shape, really, to, uh, to mount an offensive there. He was on the defensive for those four or five minutes. Beautiful Bobby Eaton, Sweet Brown Sugar, the winners in 10 minutes, 41 seconds. We have the Midnight Express coming up. Back to it in just a moment. Oh. Signals their entry into the wrestling area, Norvell Austin. Dennis Condry, Randy Rose, they'll make a decision as to which two of them are going to be wrestling here. This will be a one-fall 15-minute time limit match on the right of the screen from Salem, Virginia. Total weight 419 pounds from Salem, Virginia, Rick McCord and his partner from San Carlos, Arizona, Chief Thundercloud. And going against them at a total of 477 pounds, the Midnight Express from Florida, Dennis Condry, from Memphis, Tennessee, Norvell Austin, and from Atlanta, Georgia, Randy Rose. This match won fall 15-minute time limit. Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Well, they're all decked out, and they all got their jackets off, so maybe they think it's going to be a three-on-two match, but the referee is not going to allow that one. They'll make the decision here who will be facing uh, Rick McCord and Chief Thundercloud as a conference is held, and Norvell Austin will be hitting the chair, and here we go with bell time as Randy Rose and Dennis Condry go after him. Rick McCord, young wrestler out of Salem, Virginia, in here with his partner, Chief Thundercloud, doing battle against this Midnight Express who have been rolling through the territory. The three of them, they decide which two are going to wrestle at ringside. It might be Condry and Rose, might be Condry and Austin, or any combination there. Young Rick McCord with his work cut out for him, Dennis Condry. One of the bigger of the uh, Midnight Express. Boy, they're all big. McCord sits down on the left arm. Condry back up on his feet. McCord right on him. Condry with a handful of hair. The referee trying to get that stop. McCord whipping him across the ring. Back drops in. Good move by Rick McCord. He's to the corner. Makes the tag on Chief Thundercloud. Thundercloud with a double stop off the rope. Dennis Condry on the mat. He's got a face lock on it. Thundercloud, another good move, but Condry counters it. The Chief going for the cover. No count began, though, as Dennis Condry was able to move him off. Condry's made the tag. This is big Randy Rose out of Atlanta. The Chief with a headlock. Back onto the rope. Clean break, clean break. Back it up, Randy. Clean break called for by referee Jerry Calhoun. Well, 
Wells to break, but not quite to clean. From Randy Rose to the midfield press. The Chiefs look to the cross the ring. Chop Randy Rose coming off of there. Knocked him to the mat. Thundercloud in the corner. Rick McCord will be coming back in. Two minutes into the action. Two minutes into a one minute. Uh, we're under a one ball. 15 minute time limit match. Covered by Rick McCord. Not for long. Randy Rose after him. Backs him over to the Midnight Express corner. The tag made. And here's Dennis Conrad. Conrad nailed it with a right hand. Upper arm as he came off the ropes. Rick McCord on the mat. Conrad just get up and takes him up. Randy Rose in here, the Express double team. Rose with Rick McCord in the air, body slams it, goes to the rope. Leap, but McCord had moved out of the way. Three minutes gone, three minutes into the match. Randy Rose. Had the shoulders down for a count of one. Chief Thundercloud was headed in to help out if he was needed, but the court able to break the cover at the one count. Norvell Austin shouting instructions and encouragement from the Midnight Express corner. that left arm. Condry in. Boy, he caught Rick right in the top of the head with that boot. Puts the stretch on the left arm. 3.45 gone. 3 minutes 45 seconds into the action. Dave Brown at ringside with Lance Russell. More wrestling action coming up after this one. Bill Moore tag team action later today. The superstar Bill Dundee and Steve Kern will be teaming up in a match. McCord's head into the knee of Randy Rose. Rose steps in after the tag made. He's got McCord up in the air now. Backbreaker across the knee. Drops with a forearm. Referee started to count at one, but Randy Rose picked him up. He did not go for the three count. Rose at about 260 pounds, something like that. Going against young Rick McCord. 4.45 gone. Four minutes, 45 seconds into the action. Plenty of time left. It's a 15-minute time limit match. Condry with the knee from all the way across the ring. Stays in there as Randy Rose goes back to the corner. McCord between his legs, over to the corner, gets the tag on Chief Thundercloud. Randy Rose jumps in there. Thundercloud taking on both of them. Back to Condry. Thundercloud with a shoulder butt. Heads to the rope. Oh, Norvell Austin from outside. Norvell knocked him down. Condry has the chief in the air. A power slam. Two, three, and that's it. Five minutes, 33 seconds in the win for the Midnight Express. Referee Jerry Calhoun was trying to wrestle Randy Rose back from down the ropes into the corner in there. And at that time, Austin used that opportunity to reach up, grab the leg of the chief, put him down. But the final power slam by Dennis Condry, and boy, his 250 uh, can really put it on you, too. Took him down. One, two, three, and that was the end result with the Midnight Express coming out victorious. More action in a moment. advance warning right now you folks in Campbellsburg Indiana Thursday March the 11th at the West Washington High School we'll have more about it later on now Tuesday night we mentioned two matches I want to tell you about the entire card Gypsy Joe goes against Rick McCord Roy Rogers against Tojo Yamamoto 
$5,000 bounty match. Stan Lane's going to have to be handling the Cuban assassin with Jimmy Hart at ringside. A six-man tag match. It's going to be a beaut. Beautiful Bobby, the dream machine, and sweet brown sugar. Going to be going against Rick and Robert Gibson with Steve Regal coming back into Louisville Gardens as the third man on that side of the ring. Then it'll be Dennis Condry and Randy Rose, two of the Midnight Express, going against Bill Dundee and Dutch Mantell. The final match, well, this is the one at least Steve has been waiting for, and regardless of what Norvell is saying, by golly, he's got to have some worry in his heart. Steve Kern, Norvell Austin, a single match, Tuesday night at the Garden. Hey, Dave. <laughs> All right. It's a match to the expiration of time. It's producing at a total of 414 pounds on the left of the screen. From Black Oak, Arkansas, Kenny Shane, and from Jackson, Tennessee, Rooster Cogman. Going against them at a total of 439 pounds. From Tampa, Florida, Steve Kern. And from Australia, the superstar, Bill Dundee. They are the current holders of the AWA Southern Tag Championship belt. This is a non-title match to the expiration of time. Referee Jerry Calhoun. Crowd got a kick out of the uh, colorful attire that Rooster Cogman had uh, on. And Kenny Shane going against a couple of real ornery son of a guns and Steve Kern and Bill Dundee. They happen to be the champions. The belts are not at stake. But by golly, I'll tell you what, they'll be battling just like they were most of the time. Boy, they sure will. I tell you what, as the match goes on, too, you'll be able to see why they're the current holders of those Southern Tag belts. Tough belts to hang on to, but they got them. Kern. It's Mr. Coglin down on the mat. Coglin looked like he was reaching for the hair, but he didn't have a chance to grab hold as Kern moving him around. Sunday after the tag. Put Brewster Coglin down to the mat. Got a headlock on him. Ooh. Coglin tried to roll the shoulders down. He had him there for a moment, long enough for a count. Referee saw that hair pulling. He tried to break it up, but Dundee did it for him. Right. Rooster Cogman makes the tag. This is Kenny Shane. Shane out of Black Oak, Arkansas. Recent addition to the first family. Dundee stalking him around the ring. He got Bill in the eyes. Shane to the corner, the tag on his partner, Rooster Cogman, coming back. Cogman, boy, one after Dundee. He got him in the throat. I think he hit him with a thumb, point of the thumb in the throat. Cogman whips him across the ring, carried him into the turnbuckle. Dundee gets his feet out from under him, throws Cogman back, keeps Shane out of the action, rolls to the corner of the tag on Steve Kern. Kern battling both of them. Dundee grabs Cogman. Steve Kern grabs Ken Shane. The two freight trains meet in the center of the ring. Both of them head out of the ring to regroup. There's Steve Kern, Bill Dundee up in the ring. Dundee steps back out on the apron now. Steve is the official man in the ring. Rooster Cogman under the rope. Ah, he heads back to the center of the ring to be greeted by Steve Kern. Three minutes gone in this first fall. Remember, this match is an expiration of time match. We're going to have wrestling as long as there's time remaining. When time expires, we'll add up the falls that each team has won, and they'll be the winners. Kenny Shane gets the tag from Rooster Cogman.
Jane fires turn into the rope, touches him with the upper arm, but boy, Steve hit him hard, knocked Jane off balance. Jane back into the corner. Bill Dundee being run back to the corner by the referee. Rooster Coghlan back in. Steve Bird. Oh. <laughs> Hello, he got him with a forearm. He's still staggering. Coghlan has turned by the hair. Steve from back in the corner. Picked his way out. Head for his corner. And the tag on Dundee. But Cogman grabbed him about less than a foot away from the tag. And no tag. Now there's the tag. The Steve back to the corner and tags Bill Dundee. Upper arm by Dundee. Oh, the boot across the forehead. Billy laying a hurt to him right now. He sure is. He's been watching uh, Cogman and Kenny Shane work on Steve Kern. He's been itching to get in there, and now he is in there. He's giving him back some of that medicine he's been watching. Kenny Shane in. Tag has been made. Five minutes gone. Five minutes into the first ball. Got a lot of time on our expiration of time, Matt Davy, so we've still got plenty of wrestling coming up as Bill Dundee and Steve Kern handling the uh, challenge of Kenny Shane and Rooster Cogman. They uh, primarily, uh, I think their biggest offensive weapon, have been jamming at the eyes. They seem to be going for the eyes and trying to hurt uh, Dundee. Yeah, there goes Shane again. Well, he's muckling that right eye. with a right hand. He reached for the tag. Yeah, he got the tag. Here's Cogman coming back in. Forearm across the back. A little hair pulling. We've been doing a lot of that, too. Yes, sir. Cogman. Runs into Dundee. Dundee. Down behind him. He's going for a sleeper, looks like. Shane kind of wishes he hadn't run in there at that moment. Kern got him, and Dundee going with a sleeper hold on Rooster Cogman. He's having a hard time holding on, but he is, in fact, persevering as Kern is keeping Shane out of high. Oh, Mojo and the fighting stick. Across the back of Bill Dundee. Steve Stern heads for Tojo, and Tojo got him, too. Now Tojo and the stick head out of the wrestling area. The first fall goes to Bill Dundee and Steve Stern, 6.43, when the disqualification occurs. Yeah, it'll be a disqualification on the, uh, the team of... Uh, Kenny Shane and Rooster Cogman as Dundee and Kern win it by disqualification due to Tojo jumping in, banging uh, Dundee with that fighting stick in there. We'll take time out, check our time, and be back with action in just a moment. Hello, Steve Kern. Disqualification when Tojo Yamamoto hit the ring with the fighting stick. We are just about set to go with this second fall as Kenny Shane and Rooster Cogman step up onto the apron. Referee signals it's time to start the second fall. And here we go. Bill Dundee starting against Rooster Cogman in this one. Uh, the first one ended, uh, as you have been told, with a disqualification as Tojo Yamamoto jumped in there and wailed Dundee with that fighting stick. That called for the conclusion of it, and the referee stopped about at that point. Rooster Cogman and Kenny Shane and Jimmy Hart, for some reason. Let me tell you something, Russell. I made that boy right there a promise a while ago, and I'm going to keep my promise. I've been on the phone right now, calling all over the United States, and I've got some people coming here that's going to make the family number one like it's always been number one. 
Okay, Jimmy. Whatever. Hart calls Kenny Shane down to the floor while Rooster Cogman just got blasted by uh, Steve Kern. Come on, Jimmy, get out of here. You don't belong out of here. today, it makes me sick, man. Come on, Kenny, come on, man. Rooster banged down hard uh, as Steve Kern manhandling Cogman takes him straight over. He hooked those arms and suplexed him straight over. Come on, you've got him, Rooster. Kenny Shane started in. The referee said stop, and he did stop at that moment. Dundee takes the tag, and well, Billy holding Cogman as Steve Kern and Dundee letting a little of their wrath out on the Rooster Cogman. Full Nelson. All these people are brainwashed out here. You know, I know exactly what Stan Lane's doing. He's riding up down the highway with Dundee and Kern. He's Kern's going, hey, Stan, how big am I? He's going, oh, you're a giant man. You're bigger than Luke Rigno. Oh, shut up, you little punk. And I know what Dundee's doing. He said, how tall am I, Stan Lane? And Stan goes, oh, you're six, five, six, 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 seven. Well, Stan, let me tell you, baby, it ain't going to do you no good, brother. Come on, baby. The rambling commentary of Jimmy Hart, who, uh, I don't know, I detect kind of a desperate sound in Jimmy's voice. Uh, he mentioned a moment ago about getting, uh, we got some guys coming in from all over the country, that kind of thing. Like, uh, he feels like he's in real serious trouble. Dundee and Kern, meanwhile, taking care of business as uh, Dundee leg drops uh, Kenny Shane. Shane and Cogman as we said in the first ball, we're using those uh, I'll got, I, I gouging, that. whoa, what is it? Yeah, do it again. Eye gouging tactics on uh, Dundee and Kern. You know, I, I don't know that uh, Hart has done Kenny Sheen any good out here yelling and complaining. I think about all he's done is make Kern and Dundee mad so far. We're coming up on the three minute mark of the second ball, three minutes gone. Kenny Shane hanging in with a head scissors and Kern took no short time, just banged it out of it. Takes him all the way up in the air and dumps him down. But Cogman ran all the way through. What heart that Kenny Shane's got. Look at him, baby. When Jimmy Hart comes out, he's going to be a superstar. I promise you. You know, I've got some things to do. I need a little bit and I'm going to allow him. You can take off right now and get started on him as far as we're concerned. Jimmy, put the belt down. You know that. Nice. Okay. Back into action. There's Steve Kern, front face lock. Tags out to Bill Dundee, and Dundee comes in, turns the arm over. Billy down and Kenny Shane slugging away now and the referee is not getting to back him up. Jimmy Hart over here from outside of the ring. Don't come up here. Come on, you big bully. Come on. Come on, man. That's right. Hit Don't get in behind us, down. Jimmy. Get out there and fight your own battle. 4.15 gone in the second fall. Four minutes, 15 seconds. First fall of 6.43 disqualification to Kern and Dundee. They are one fall up. I doubt if there was much serious thought that Shane and Cogman could upset uh, the AWA Southern Tag Champ. They are, as a matter of fact, battling a little uh, harder than I really thought they were going to. They've used various tactics, I will say, to keep themselves in this thing. But every time they do, they also irritate Dundee and Kern, and that just me. oh, nice leg dive. But Billy kicks out of it. Shane reaching up for a tag. Gets Cogman. There's a tag on Steve Kern. Two new gladiators come in there. Mm. I'll tell you one thing about this Cogman, too. He, he's a street fighter. He's been battling, gouging eyes, and pulling hair, and whatever. And that, uh, I think, is one of the things that's kept him in the match as long as they have been. He, he is in there with a good one if he wants to do a little fight. Boy, oh boy, that's going to be it. Yeah. It's okay, he didn't beat Kenny, though. He didn't beat Kenny. Steve unloosed that uh, forearm, Dave, and just his feet absolutely snapped straight up right in up. the air yeah. as, as uh, he then covered him up. And 
Got a one, two, three on him. Two. The second ball is also going to go to Dundee and Kern. Cogman still, uh, well, he's, I was wondering if he was going to be, be that uh, crazy to stay in there and, and battle with Dundee and Kern when they, two of them couldn't go against him. What was the official time? On time on it was five minutes, 23 seconds. Five, 23. And during all of uh, Jimmy Hart's tirades over here, uh, his guys, Kenny Shane and uh, Rooster Cogman also were taking quite a beating in there at the hands of Steve Kern. And uh, finally, Steve nailed him with that uh, forearm. Ooh, and 523 know. wrapped it up for the team of Dundee and Kern. That's two straight falls for him. Yeah, looks like if somebody had a rope and just snapped the feet right out from under him where Kern hit him with that doggone uh, thing. We're going to take time out, check our time, and we'll be back in just a moment. Back into action here on Channel 3's Championship Wrestling in just a moment. I gave you the entire card just a few moments ago. Dynamite with a six-man tag, that bounty hunter match, and then you got a tag match with Dennis Condry and Randy Rose against Bill Dundee, Dutch Mantell. Going to be really interesting in the main event. Single match, Steve Kern, Norval Austin. We'll talk to Steve about that in just a moment. Dutch, you're going to be joining up with uh, Bill Dundee to go against Rose and Condry. It's a big team you're facing. All right, I feel real good today. I feel so good I might want to go and slap my grandmama down. But the last time I was involved with the Midnight Express, I was asked by Bill Dundee and Steve Kern to be their partners. But things got personal with me, and Randy Rose and Dennis Condry seemed to uh, want to do away with me. And I've been around a long time, and I've lived a long time, and I've fought all my life, and I don't see why this is any different from anything else. Now, Randy Rose, you baggy-eyed, knock-kneed-looking Texas egg-sucking dog, let me tell you one thing. You're not, getting a, you're not getting rid of me, you're not getting rid of Dundee, and you're not going to win the match. So when we show up in Louisville, I'm going to try my dead-level best to teach you a lesson in wrestling, and I'm going to be watching Steve Kerr's match, and don't try to interfere any, boys. Mark my word. Yeah, they've already made that comment that Norvell's never by himself. That's right, Lance. I've waited a long time to see this, and if you just bring my good friend in here, brother Norvell Austin, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be watching his back, and them two goose ain't running in. I can't wait right. to see this match, buddy. Well, Steve, you got it. A single match with Norvell. Well, I've been waiting for five weeks for this, Lance, and I'm going to tell you right now, basically, I'm a wrestler. When I go into a wrestling match, I go into pin a man's shoulders, but this time it's different. Norvell Austin, you've backed yourself into a corner, and you're looking at your future sitting right here. I'm not coming to wrestle you. This match may not go long, and anybody there is going to remember this match for a long time. You're going to be telling your kids about this, because after this match is over, there's going to be somebody left laying bloody, and it ain't going to be Steve Kern. You're going to be looking up at him and wishing you'd never opened your big mouth. Well, a lot of vengeance built up in that, and you can understand it, too. You'll see him, Steve Kern, Norvell Austin, Tuesday night, Louisville Garden. Uh, we had some action in there starting in the first one. It was not absolutely the greatest uh, championship wrestling program, but we had a good show with lots of action in there. Uh, Dave, how about a recap? Right, we, did, we did have action from the beginning there. We had lots it. of disqualifications today as we had lots of interference in the matches. And the first one was when we got started with all of that. Uh, Stan Lane was going against Speed. Stan Lane uh, handling himself very well. I think he pretty well had Speed in the position to make a pin on it, but he never got the chance because... Ali Hassan, the Iranian assassin, jumped into the ring at 4 minutes 43 seconds. Referee disqualified speed at that point, and Stan Lane has the victory at about 4.45. Might point out also that he was followed very shortly after by the Cuban assassin, who also yes. made his appearance and out there. And half a dozen others yeah. finally got him out of there. Then it was beautiful Bobby Eaton, sweet brown sugar as a tag team, going against Roy Rogers and Joe Stark. Roy and uh, Joe gave a good accounting of themselves. It was 10 minutes, 41 seconds of the action. But again, Bobby Eaton and Sweet Brown Sugar the last three or four minutes pretty well in control of the match. The Gibson brothers came in to help out Roy Rogers and Joe Stark and got them disqualified as a result. So it was beautiful Bobby Eaton and Sweet Brown Sugar with a win. 10 minutes, 41 seconds of time on that one. Midnight Express going against Rick McCord and Chief Thundercloud, and in this one, it was the Midnight Express all the way. Norvell Austin elected to be the man who stayed outside the ring, and it was Dennis Condry and Randy Rose teaming up to defeat Rick McCord and Chief Thundercloud a little over five and a half minutes. Then, it was Bill Dundee and Steve Kern going against Kenny Shane and Rooster Cogman, and in two straight falls, it was the team of Dundee and Kern defeating Kenny Shane and Rooster Cogman. Uh, Dundee and Kern, of course, with the championship belts. I think we mentioned during the match that they were favorites in it. But this Rooster Cogman, uh, as we said, is a fighter. Kenny Shane, too. And he had some encouragement along the way from Jimmy Hart during the day-to-day. -day. 
And uh, I don't know if that inspired him or what, but uh, anyway, they kept battling, but Dundee and Steve Kern did win it in two straight. Yeah, first of all, uh, Tojo saw fit to Another enter the fighting stick in there, right. bang Billy on the head and, uh, and try to cause general confusion and problems for Dundee and Kern. Uh, it did not, only a few bumps on uh, Billy from that fighting stick bouncing mm -hmm. off of him. Disqualification went. They had had the fall one anyhow, and um, it wouldn't have made a whole lot of difference. But it did come out as an official disqualification. Davey, that pretty well takes care of it. Next week, more big action. By golly, the unpredictable right here. Championship Wrestling. We're going to be looking for you back. Dave Brown, Lance Russell. Bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of Championship Wrestling. Championship Wrestling, Davey. Well, we are indeed. I tell you what, coming up today, some good matches. Nightmare. Well, we going against Stan Lane in the opening match today. We'll have beautiful Bobby Eaton going against Chief.